Hi everyone! So for today's video, we're going to be investigating the question, does sunscreen really work? Before we can answer this question, it is important to understand how the sun can affect our skin. The sun emits ultraviolet radiation, which is almost 95% UVA radiation. This is a primary type of radiation that causes wrinkles and can trigger carcinogenic effects like cancer. There is also UVB radiation. The difference between the two is their wavelength. UVA has a longer wavelength and is therefore more damaging because it can penetrate the deeper layers of the skin. Now let's say you wanted to relax at the beach and tan. Well, you would be exposing your skin to both these types of radiations. This will cause the skin cells to produce a factor called melanin, which is a pigment found in your skin. The longer one is exposed to the sun, the more they tan or the more melanin their body produces. Your body tries to produce this melanin as a protective measure. Melanin helps to protect the surface layer of the skin called the epidermis, and it does so by absorbing these UV lights before the radiation can penetrate the deeper layers and damage the DNA of the skin cells. If damage occurs, the skin cells are not able to reproduce as effectively, nor can they produce the skin benefiting factors like collagen, which is a protein that helps maintain firmness in the skin. Decreased collagen production means decreased skin elasticity, which leads to the formation of wrinkles. UV radiation can also cause mutations to occur in the skin cells undergoing reproduction. If a mutation occurs in the DNA, the cells are more likely to become cancerous as they are unable to self-regulate. That being said, your skin is limited in the amount of UV rays it can absorb in a given period of time. This is where sunscreen can help by providing that extra layer of protection. It works in a couple of different ways depending on the type of sunscreen you're wearing. For instance, if you choose to use a chemical sunscreen, you're using a sunscreen that contains organic compounds, meaning it contains some form of carbon. On the other hand, if you choose to wear a physical sunscreen, your sunscreen probably has either titanium dioxide or zinc oxide in it. But we'll get into the different types of sunscreens later. Now that we understand the basics of how the sun can be harmful to our skin, let's get into what this video is really about. Sunscreen. As mentioned before, there are two main types of sunscreen, chemical and physical. Physical sunscreen can contain either titanium dioxide or zinc oxide, and this type of sunscreen works similar to a mirror. It will reflect and scatter the UV rays as they come in contact with the skin. Physical sunscreens that have titanium dioxide or zinc oxide as their main component tend to be less soluble in liquid meaning that it precludes any transdermal absorption of more than a minimal amount regardless of concentration and formulation of the sunscreen product. Given that these two elements are insoluble, unreactive, and do not penetrate into skin or enter into a systemic circulation to any meaningful extent, the FDA considered the available data on titanium dioxide and zinc oxide adequate enough to approve it and allow it to be used in sunscreen formulation. Currently, it is believed that the difference between titanium dioxide and zinc oxide is that titanium dioxide mainly absorbs UVB light, whereas zinc oxide absorbs UVA. So as you can imagine, a combination of both would provide broader and more effective protection. Chemical sunscreens, on the other hand, work differently. Because they contain organic compounds, chemical sunscreens are able to dissipate the absorbed UV radiation via photochemical pathways involving reactive oxygen molecules. This reaction converts the UV radiation into heat and is emitted from the body. It is important to note that both the sunscreens and their formulations were, at some point in time, a bit toxic to skin model cells when undergoing testing in the lab. This was the experimental studies and may be the reason why some people still hesitate to wear sunscreen. So given this information, is sunscreen all that necessary? Let's take a look at what the research says. On a daily basis, the primary purpose of sunscreen is to protect people from harmful UV rays. Although the need for sunscreen is heavily debated, some studies have been conducted to support the use of sunscreen daily. Multiple studies tested sunscreen's effectiveness on skin cell tumors, specifically basal and squamous cell carcinoma tumors. Basal and squamous cell carcinoma tumors are the most prevalent forms of skin cancer. By the end of the study, there was an observed 40% decrease in squamous cell carcinoma tumors in those that apply sunscreen daily. Despite the significant impact of sunscreen on squamous cell carcinoma, there was a much less considerable impact on basal cell carcinoma. 
These results support the day-to-day -day use of sunscreen in addition to other forms of protection from UV rays. In older studies, there has also been overall support for sunscreen. One experiment showed that people exposed to a moderate amount of UV rays and reach a 7.5 sun protection factor, or SPF, will have an 84% reduced risk of basal and squamous cell carcinoma before 55 years old. The study has also highlighted the impact of sun exposure and skin types on a person's risk of skin cancer. The difference in exposure during childhood and adulthood was described using the sun affinity ratio, or SAR. At the same time, skin types were separated into four categories based on a person's likelihood of being tanned or developing either basal or squamous cell carcinoma tumors. From the graph, it shows how the different sun protection factor, sun affinity ratio, and skin types affect and mitigate the risk an individual is exposed to when under UV radiation. Although the benefits of sunscreen are numerous, it is still important to go over some of the risks sunscreen may impose on human health. These risks can be broken down into three categories. Sunscreen reaction with the skin, sunscreen absorption, and sunscreen effects on developmental and endocrine impairments. Commonly reported reactions to sunscreen are irritation to the skin, such as stinging, burning, and clogging of the pores. Certain ingredients to sunscreen, such as oxybenzone and octomethoxinamate, have also been reported to cause allergic reactions with the skin, but very rarely. Two studies, sponsored by the United States Food and Drug Administration, have also confirmed that four sunscreen ingredients, oxybenzone, avobenzone, octocrylene, and acamsol, showed systemic absorption. Blood levels for these compounds were higher than those advised by U.S. Food and Drug Administration standards when these compounds were utilized under maximum usage recommendations over four consecutive days. The researchers also discovered that each of these chemicals had extensive half-lives, which suggests that frequent use of sunscreen may cause buildup in the body. However, it is important to note that most people do not use the maximal usage of sunscreen that was used in this study. Further research needs to be done to understand if any health risks are actually associated with absorption of these ingredients. Lastly, recent data suggests that some sunscreen ingredients may function as endocrine disruptors, which could be hazardous to developing organisms. These ingredients have been linked to altered estrogen, androgen, and progesterone activity, which can lead to reproductive or developmental toxicity and dysfunction. Certain ingredients have also been shown to cross the blood-brain barrier, implying a neurotoxicity risk. So based on what you know now, how will you answer the initial question? Do you find sunscreen to be really necessary? Let us know what you think in the comments, and thanks for watching!